Hi there, welcome to the Maths Department at Bootham School. I'm here to talk about why you should want to choose Maths A Level and in particular why you would want to study Maths A Level at Bootham School. There's a question here which we might come back to later on in the, in the talk. This is the sort of thing you'll be looking at when you're studying um, A Level Maths here. Um, my Year 12 students or College 1 as we call it, in fact they've just done this question in a, in a recent lesson. So a few weeks into the course uh, we're in October now and that's the sort of thing we're doing. Got lots of straight lines, an interesting circle, some ch chunky equations and some chunky maths. At the end of the video I might even have time to um, show you part of the solution to that. Okay, so who are we? The maths department at Bootham Schools for the A-level teaching is made up of myself, Matthew Aston. There's also Anne Whittle, Mandy Naylor, James Ratcliffe, Will Lewis and Steve Ellsworth. Now, from my point of view, this is actually a really p important part of what I've got to say. These guys who will be teaching you, they are fantastic maths teachers. All schools obviously have good maths teachers in them, but these guys are all capable and very effective at teaching both A-level maths and A-level further maths. So we've got a wealth of experience here of very strong mathematicians who, ha who are also quite human. We've got Anne Will, she used to be a head of department, head of maths at a previous school, so she's got all that experience. Mandy Naylor, she was head of maths at her previous school before she came here. James Ratcliffe, he was head of maths at this school before I was. And Will Lewis, he was head of maths before James Ratcliffe. Steve Ellsworth is yet to be head of maths, but I'm still working on him to try and persuade him. Anyway, so that's the experience that we've got there means that if you are studying A-level maths um, and you have a problem with the work that's been set or a question that you've got in your preps, then pop along to the maths department office and if there's someone there, they are going to be able to help you. You're not, re you're not relying on just finding your maths teacher. Any of us will be able to help with those things. So why study A-level maths? Obviously, there's a loads of reasons and I'm sure you are well aware of why to study A-level maths, not least because it's good fun and people enjoy it. If you're sat there thinking, really, then maybe you want to question your choice of A-levels. But if you're sitting there thinking, yes, I do, I love maths, he's right, then you're in the right place. So we've got career opportunities, employability skills, A-level maths helps with, preparation for higher education, obviously, and supporting other subjects, other A-level subjects that you may choose. If we look at careers, then there's a huge list of careers where A-level maths will support, that, support you in that job and also get you into that job. Um, I could go into those and talk about them. It's all the usual ones you'd imagine, like accounting, engineering, banking, finance, data analysis, computer science jobs. Um, but there's loads of websites out there, so I recommend if you're wondering what sort of things it might help with or what you're thinking of doing, then search it on the web. Which courses require A-level maths? Well, there's a lot of, of courses at university that will require you to have done A-level maths. The list here um, is fairly clear and there's others as well. So these ones at the top are all courses um, which will require A-level maths to be there. Um, and then the lower down ones, there's some courses where it's likely that most universities will require you to have A-level maths. Obviously, for other courses where A-level maths is not a requirement, it is also a good choice and a good A-level to have because people understand um, that it's a good A-level. Uh, supporting other subjects at A-level. So I've put in a slide here which just might show you a few faces from the past. Um, wondered if any of you might be out there thinking who these people are. Um, so I'll have a little, little think about those for a moment. I can go through them. You might spot this chap down here. He's fairly famous. Don't really need to talk much about him. The guy across there it looks a little bit different these days. That's a young Alan Sugar with his dodgy computer. ZX Spectrum, my mate had one of those. Um, and then there's Ada Lovelace above that, um, who worked with Babbage to develop essentially what could be argued as the first computer. So a female mathematician there from history who was uh, very strong in her field. And then this guy here is not famous at all, but I thought it was a good picture because he looks like he's stuffing an octopus into a jar. So there you go. Moving on. Teaching. We're going to be able to teach you A-level maths and A-level further maths. Um, and also we'll be able to support you with other um, exams that you may need to do for going to university. That's STEP, MAT and AEA. So the A-level course, it's a very simple structure to the A-level maths course. It's a linear course. You start in September in College 1 or Year 12 and you work through until you finish the course. 
um, you'll probably have two different teachers. One will teach you the uh, pure mathematics, which is in the blue books, pure maths year one, AS and year two. We don't actually do the AS as an exam, but you do study those two books and that's the pure math part of the course. Pure maths is the stuff to do with equations, algebra, lots of rearranging things, expanding things, um, what your true mathematicians love doing. And then the other half of the course is the mechanics and statistics, or what's called applied mathematics. And that's probably going to be taught to you by a different teacher from your pure maths teacher. Uh, again, that's over, spread over the two years with the year one book and the year two book. Um, and you do all of that over the course of two years, plus the time it will need to be in there to do the exams. When it comes to the exams, um, we have three exams to sit. Two of them are pure maths exams, each two hours long, and one mechanics and statistics joint exam, also two hours long. So essentially that means that the pure maths part is twice the content of the applied maths, which then itself is split into statistics and mechanics. And it's as simple as that. You teach all that, you learn all that, you do three exams, you're done. Then there's the further maths um, A-level. A separate A-level, an extra A-level. If you're doing further maths A-level, you will be doing maths A-level as well. So it's going to be one of your A-levels for the maths as well as maths. So you'll have those two separate qualifications. Um, those of you that do study further maths, you'll basically do all of the work that's in the A-level first in a, a linear form, um, but much more rapidly with more lessons in the week, um, leaving then the further maths to be taught following on from that. And at the end of two years, you'll sit those exams described earlier for the A-level plus the exams required for the further maths. Um, it looks a little bit complicated here, and there's more there than you need to do. Essentially, we need to do Core Pure Mathematics Book 1 and Core Pure Mathematics Book 2, plus two others. And those two others are likely to be Further Statistics 1 and Further Mechanics 1. But there's op an option sometimes, some years, depending on timetabling, of also doing the D1 Decision Maths as an option. So we'll see when it comes to numbers whether that's possible. Um, some people have asked about doing further statistics 2 and further mechanics 2 and decision maths 2. It's unlikely that you'll study those three modules because um, that would be choosing a harder module. It makes a lot more sense and also gives you a broader um, range of things if we do statistics and mechanics or statistics and decision maths or mechanics and decision maths. Okay, moving on. Beyond the classroom. So, do we always just sit around behind desks and work in the maths department? No, not at all. We sometimes sit behind desks, not in the classroom, but in the hall, and do maths challenges. More exams, yes, people do exams for fun. So these can be one-hour exams on sometimes the Olympiads, which can be up to two hours long. Um, they take place too. So that's a British Olympiad. Um, and these are things that schools do across the country. You may well have heard of them. Then also, we have some trips out. We sometimes es escape the classroom and escape the school um, and go to various venues. Usually it's either um, Leeds or down at Salford University, where you can get these courses called Maths in Action, and the other one is um, the Maths Inspiration Show. These are fantastic days where we take a group of students who are the A-level students, and they'll listen to lectures, which you might think, really? But it's actually quite fascinating. There's all sorts of things there. We had a talk recently about the Bloodhound Project, which is the guy who built the car that went over a 1,000 miles an hour. Uh, we listen to people talk about um, antibiotics and um, bacteria that are, are resistant to antibiotics and how mathematicians are working alongside biologists to work out ways of developing new drugs that will treat these things. And we even saw a guy who was able to juggle seven balls, explain how juggling worked and also talk about how he had developed a system which was an early warning system for ships colliding, which you might think is quite an unlikely thing to happen, but apparently it's a big enough risk for them to pay this guy an awful lot of money to use his software so that he can give them a ring every now and again and say, I think in six hours time one of your ships might collide with someone else's and they change course. So he's making a living out of doing that whilst doing a bit of lecturing at Cambridge University. Um, as well as that, we've got the Further Mass Support program that we will sometimes dip into and we have links with the York University through them. Also, I've got a picture there of the Enigma machine. Occasionally, we're lucky enough to get in touch with Bletchley Park. It's been an ongoing thing now for oh, about a decade where every few years we get Bletchley Park to visit Bootham and they bring one of the Enigma mach machines with us and you can actually have a bit of a play with it. So we'll see how things pan out in the future and whether we can get them back or not. It would be rather nice. Um, it is a genuine Enigma machine and it is the one that was touched by Benedict in the film. So put some people like that more than the maths behind it. Um, so what next? Well, entry requirements. Uh, there's no messing about. 
maths A level is not an easy A level. You've got to be good at maths. And so we ask for grade seven or above for you to study A level maths. Um, that's equivalent to the old grade A in the old grading system. And for A level further maths, we like to have um, a grade eight or nine um, to allow access to the further maths curriculum because further maths is difficult. So decision time. Is A-level maths for you? Well, if it's yes, you need to work hard and you will enjoy it and you will do well. Um, those of you that are very sharp may spot that my slide has a, an error on it, which I've left in just because it's quite nice to see if anyone spots it. So have a think about that. I might mention it at the end if I don't forget. If you're not sure, then you need to ask for some advice. Talk to your teachers wherever you are. Talk to teachers at Bootham if it's Bootham. Um, and, and have a think about it. Look into it. Don't just rush into it. Don't let someone persuade you to do it if you don't want to do, do it. Unless, of course, it's going to be the right thing for you. So make a good decision on that one. And finally, a little quote that a colleague of mine brought to me that he has in his office and in his classroom, which is, if I feel unhappy, I do mathematics to become happy. And if I am happy, I do mathematics to keep happy. Rather a nice one. Okay, so if we're going to have a quick look at this question here, I need to read the question to you first of all. You've got a diagram there, which is describing A is the centre of a circle. So this circle has the equation x squared minus x, x squared minus 8x plus y squared plus 10y plus 1 equals 0. Um, and then the question goes on to say, P, Q and R are points on the circle. So P, Q and R are points on the circle. And the lines L1, L2 and L3 are tangents to the circle. That's L1, L2 and L3 um, at these points respectively. Line L2 intersects line L1 at B. We can see that. And L3 at D. We can see that. So there are actually five parts to this question, but I am not going to do all five parts. I'm going to do the first two parts, part A and part B. Part A says find the centre and radius of C. So this doesn't actually have anything to do with these tangents, it's just this circle here with that equation. Now, by this point, you will have probably, at GCSE, studied the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. But now, and you may have done this also if you've been taught a bit extra, we know that x plus a all squared plus, let's make that a minus, and then y minus b all squared equals r squared describes the equation of a circle whose centre is at a, b and whose radius is r. So if I can make this look like this, we're in business for finding the centre and radius of the circle. The way to do that is essentially like completing the square but twice. So if we just look at x squared minus 8x, you get x minus 4 all squared. Then if we think about expanding that, you'll have plus 16 at the end. So take off the 16. Then if we look at y squared plus 10y, we put plus y plus 5 all squared. Expanding that, you would get plus 25 at the end. So take off that 25 and then pop the plus 1 at the end. Now if we get rid of the bits here and here and here over that side, we're left with x minus 4 all squared plus y plus 5 all squared equals 16 and 25 is probably 41, negative 41. Add on 1 is negative 40. So take it to the side, you've got 40. Fingers crossed. 40 is not a very good square number, is it? Never mind. I think that's right. It is. Um, so the centre is 4, comma, minus 5. And the radius equals the square root of 40. And that will do. Uh, part B says, given that the x-coordinate of Q is 10 and the gradient of AQ, that's this line that's not even drawn in, is positive, find the y-coordinate of Q. So that bit, we can simply say, well, if x equals 10 at this point here, if only we had an equation that was passing through point Q, we'd be able to find the y-coordinate. Well, we have. We've got this equation here, haven't we? Or this one here. Either will do. So if we put x equals 10 into that, we get 10 minus 4 all squared plus y plus 5 all squared equals 40. That's 6. 6 squared is 36. Take 36 off both sides. You've got y plus 5 all squared equals 4. Then if we expand that and get y squared 
plus 10y plus 25 minus 4 equals 0. So y squared plus 10y plus 21 equals 0. And then you can factorise that into two brackets if we're lucky. And we will have two different values of y. Um, 7 threes are 21. And they add up to 10. So y equals negative 3 and y equals negative 7. So, there's two answers, but there can only be one answer, because there's only one point. Well, it did tell us in the question that this gradient was positive, and also well, now that we know that this is at 4, minus 5, so that's at a level of minus 5 there, this one has to be above it to make it a positive gradient, so therefore, y equals minus 3. If you're wanting to know what the other questions were, the next one would have been, find the equation of L2, that's this line, giving your answer in the form y equals mx plus b. And the way you could do that would be to think about the fact that it's at right angles to one of these lines. You also would be able to work out the equation of this line because you've got these two points now. And so you'd be able to work out the gradient, find that gradient, use this point in that equation, you'd be there. Hope that was interesting. If that's the sort of thing you think, I want to be able to do more of those, then come and join us. Thank you.